Hiya, this is a, the first lesson of the second differentiation pack. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so if you look at the two graphs, you've got the sine graph at the top. Now, if I look at the gradients of the sine graph, around zero, my gradient has a value of one. I'll plot that there. At pi by two, my gradient is zero. Plot that there. At pi, my gradient is minus one plot that there. At 3 pi over 2, my gradient is 0, plot that there. And at 2 pi, my gradient's 1, plot that there. If I join in the dots between them, I get the cos graph. So graphically, the gradient of the sine graph is the cos graph. So if I start off with sine x, if I differentiate it, I get cos x, which is nice. There. Right now, there is, if, you, if I do it again, if I look at the gradients of this graph, like there and there and there and there, 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 then I can plot another graph. And it leads to the gradients of the cos graph give me minus sine. And then because sine went to cos, minus sine goes to minus cos. And I can do myself a little clock face. So sine x differentiates to cos x, differentiates to minus sine x, differentiates to minus cos x. So if I go that way, I differentiate, which is nice because if I go the other way, I integrate. There. Right, now then, this lesson's done over two videos. Uh, I'm going to miss this example out here for now, that's in the second video, because it uses uh, first principles. Right, so put in here, sine x goes to cos x, cos x goes to minus sine x. But you've got your clock face, remember the clock face, that's better. Right, let's have a look down here. Uh, <laughs> can't stand the page. There. That's not good. Right, at the bottom of the page, which is not very useful, it's got two different results. Now, if I said to you that if I were to differentiate sine of 3x by pi, that it becomes 3 cos 3x plus pi, you'd say you've seen this idea before with E and with ln, where I differentiate the bracket and put it at the front. It's because it's come from the chain rule. So here, in this case, it's a cos ax plus b. On the next one, so similar, if I had y equals oops, cos 3x plus pi, if I differentiate it, dy by dx is minus 3 sine 3x three plus pi. So generally speaking, it's once again differentiating the bracket. So it would be minus a sine ax plus b. Now what a lot of people do, if they're differentiating the y equals cos 3x um, plus pi, they put the minus sine 3x plus pi down, but then they put the 3 at the front. Now that's completely different, that's 3 take away sine of whatever it is, not minus 3 lots of sine of whatever it is. So don't do that please. Right, let's have a look at the next page then. Okay, this stuff here on the small angles and this one here also relates to, oh, sorry. sorry, it also relates to uh, small angles and, and um, first principles. So I'm going to leave that for now. The board's not expanding. <coughs> it's not working properly. Never mind. Right. Okay. Right, so for this one, 
Uh, I'm going to use the quotient rule and the product rule, it says. If I rewrite tan as sine x over cos x, uh, stick with the formula that's in the formula booklet. So f of x is sine x. So f dashed of x is cos x. g of x is cos x. So g, oops. g dashed of x is minus sine x. If I use the formula, uh, which is f dashed of x g of x, so that's cos x times by f dashed of x g of x cos x minus uh, g dashed of x minus sine x times by sine x all over the bottom bit squared, there. I get dy by dx is cos squared x plus sine squared x over cos squared x. If you look at the top, um, I've got sine squared x plus cos squared x is 1. <coughs> it's important to note that in your head you say sine squared plus cos squared is 1. It, chances are, if you're writing it down, you might miss off a random x here and there because you're thinking sine squared plus cos squared is 1 all the time. If you miss an x off any of this working, you'll lose a mark. You'll lose the final mark because the final mark is likely to be a correct solution only. So that you have to check to make sure you've got all your x's. Right then. If I'm using... Uh, secant x is 1 over cos x, then dy by dx becomes, so if 1 over cos x is secant x, 1 over cos squared is like 1 over cos x all squared, because 1 squared is 1. So that's the same as secant squared x. If you watched the previous one, I made a mistake here because I was rushing. So make sure you're happy that if you differentiate tan x, it goes back to secant squared x. In the same way, say for instance I had y equals tan of 5x, that would go to 5 lots of, because I'm differentiating this part here, times by secant squared, 5x, there, okay, right, let's have a look at, oh, nope, these are on the next video, all right, so, well done, uh, yep, definitely on the next video, okay.